Which is going to be number 10. Thank you. What are your reactions to what's up here? What's your evidence that she should be a pronoun? It's even on the pronoun um, it's page. It's a demonstration. Or no, not It's a subject. It's a subject. It's a subject pronoun. Okay. We know subject pronouns, right? Alex. Um, a should be a determiner. Oh, yeah. Our new category. A should be a determiner. It's still an article. It's still an article. We're not changing that. But we're no longer going to list it under adjective. We're going to list it under determiner. Do you do DET for that? Yes, DET I think would be a great abbreviation. Does anyone else see another determiner? Um, Samantha. Yeah. Yes, yes, coming up. In, I think when you know more, you do better, right? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch our thinking and we're going to add this category of determiners. What do you think about everyone else's choices? Okay, so everything else is getting a thumbs up? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, adjective students, does this modify a noun? Yeah. Okay. Isn't that what adjectives do? Yeah. Now we have adjectives doing one specific job. I think that will be a little bit, um, a bit easier to talk about. Adjectives doing one specific job, modifying nouns. And here it is. The, being a determiner, an article, still is announcing that a noun is coming. It's still doing that. And here's the noun. What can you tell me about the noun students? What do you know about nouns? Um, it's, a, it's people and it's plural. Okay. It's people and it's plural. What else do we know about it? What other things do we know about nouns? Plural. But it's not proper, so it's, what's the opposite of proper? Improper. Common. Common. As far as noun to go, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, common. It's a common noun. It's not capitalized. It's just a student. It's a word we use all the time. Already listed as an action verb. Do you agree or do you disagree or you're not sure? I agree. Okay. So it's something you could do. And some of you were this morning when we had the New Year's song on. All right? <laughs> Mrs. Stephen is a noun. Thank you very much. Um, what else can you tell me about the noun, Mrs. Stephen? Now that we've just kind of reviewed them, Natasha. Person. Person. What else, Petra? It's a proper noun. Proper noun. Absolutely. What else can you tell me? It's Alex. Oh, it's singular. Singular. Absolutely. Oh. Sam. Concrete. Concrete. Singular. Absolutely. All right. Now look at this. A is a determiner. We don't want that to mess us up. We want to just kind of work it into our, our existing understanding. When it says determiner, what kind of determiner is this? Article. Article. What kind of article? Indefinite. 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 It could be a song. It could be any song, right? We're not talking about a specific song here. We're talking about a song. And, of course, it is announcing that there's a noun coming. All right? What can you tell me about this noun? We know lots of things about nouns now. We've been reviewing them. What can you tell me about it? Natasha? It's a thing. It's a thing. What else? Um, Brayden? It's common. Common. Anna? Is it abstract because you can't like feel a song? I is think it, it would be, yes. You can't put your hands on a song. You can put your hands on music, you know, like written music, sheet music, but not a song. It well, kind of like comes CD. out. Right, we know what a song is. No, when you sing, when you sing, you grab the notes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, sometimes people reach for the notes. <laughs> they don't always get them, do they? <laughs> Alex. It's singular. And it's singular. Excellent. Okay. Now we've got and is listed as an adjective. What's the job of an adjective? We have just made that job more defined, haven't we? Hmm. It's a conjunction. That's what it was. All right. We've already talked about she being a pronoun and a subject pronoun. And then our last word is smile. How many of you agree that it's an action verb? Agree, disagree, not sure? 
Maybe well, a past tense verb. Oh, past tense verb. Very nice. Because she did it already. Excellent, excellent. Okay. I think we're good on parts of speech, so now let's go parts of the sentence. We're looking for subjects and predicates. Samantha, Sam. How did you decide that students would be a subject? Say that again. Oh, beautifully said. It is what the sentence is about. The students. The students and what the students did. Samantha, how did you understand that saying would be the predicate? Because um, it's, an, it's an action verb. Number one, it's an action verb. And number two, oh, wait. it's what the students did. Right? Okay. The students sang. Um, yes, B. I see a mistake here. Because okay. predicates under the noun song. So a predicate. Be under smile. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And how do we know that? Because it's something they did. Love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. A predicate is always a verb. It might be a linking verb or an action verb, but it's always a verb. Okay. And so are we good now? How many clauses do you think we have in this sentence? Two. Okay. Can somebody find the first one? So the, the cheerful student sang Miss Deaver the song and she smiled. Okay. So if this is the first clause, how many subject predicates do we need in the first clause? One clause will have one subject, one subject, one predicate. Okay? And in that clause you just identified, we have two subjects and a predicate. Is this a, a compound subject? Is that what's happening here? Did two people do the action? Petra. Well, can I like say the thing? Um, the cheerful student sang. Okay, so the student sang. Did Mrs. Sang. Stevens sing? No. no. Okay, so she didn't. She didn't join in. This is not a compound subject doing one action. So I am not the subject of this clause. I'm not the subject. I'm not the person who did the singing. How am I related to the singing? Because you're the one who I'm like the receiver, aren't I? Mm -hmm. I received the song, so I'm not the I'm not the doer. And I'm, I did not actively. So I'm not the subject. But now we have two predicates. Does this predicate have a subject? Mm -hmm. You um, did identify yeah. two clauses. Control. I think that the um, the second subject should be for the under. Under she? Yeah. Okay. Tell me your thinking about that. Because um, it's about her and she smiled. All right. It's all about she and she did the smiling. Yes. We do know that this refers back to Mrs. Stephen. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful not to pair up this in that clause with the action in this clause. We're looking for a subject predicate in this clause and a subject predicate in that clause. Excellent. Now that we have found subject predicates, we have to ask ourselves a question, don't we? What are we looking for? We have action verb. What are we going to look for? Frankie. Direct object. Yes. And in order to know if we have one, what question are you going to ask yourself? Students. Yeah. The cheerful students say what? Okay. Is there a clear answer to that? No. Yeah, it's yeah, song. a song. Yeah. Okay, they sang a song. We do indeed have a direct object here, don't we? Song is our direct object. That's what they sang. Now, once we have our direct object, what do we look for next? Indirect object. Indirect object. If we have one, where will we find it in the sentence? Where are we going to find it in the sentence? Um, well, I think I'm saying where I think it is. Okay. I think it should be like um, Miss Stephen, because then you could do the cheerful student saying a song to Miss Stephen. Oh, very good. We could take this and put it at the end of this clause in a prepositional phrase, right? It's also saying that I'm the receiver of the song. Yes. Very good. Excellent. You're absolutely right. Mrs. Stephen is the indirect object of this sentence. Where do we find indirect objects? in front of the direct objects. 
I think it's interesting. We look for the direct object first because the sentence has to have that in order to have that. So we look for this one first. And if there is one, we look for an indirect object. Will all sentences have an indirect object? No. Will all sentences have a direct object? No. 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 But we always look for them. No phrases today. Right. It's either going to be simple and has one independent clause. It's going to be compound and has two independent clauses joined with a coordinating conjunction. Or it's going to be complex and it has an independent clause and a dependent clause. Or it's going to be complex and has the dependent clause first and the independent clause second. What are we looking at here? How do we know which it is? What one word in here will tell us what this is? Well, it will give us a big clue. I shouldn't say it will tell us. It will give us a big clue. Sam? Yeah. The kind of coordinate, the kind of conjunction we have. If you go back to 32, do you remember? You look down to the bottom. Okay, Alex, and what does it say below? Oh, Coordinating conjunctions always... Used to make compound they are used to make compound sentences. Right. So we have a compound sentence. And it is, the pattern would be independent. Coordinating conjunction, independent. The comma separates the two clauses. It's found right in front of the coordinating conjunction. So what does that mean? Braden, read our first clause again. You identified it beautifully. The cheerful students sang Miss Even and Song. Boom. There's number one. And look at smiles. There's our comma. Here's our <coughs> coordinating conjunction. And here is our second clause. Can a clause be just two words? Yeah. Can a sentence, independent sentence, be two words? Yeah. Oh yeah, we wrote a whole bunch of them one day, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely can be two words. So this one's independent, this one's independent. I could say she smiled, and that would be fine. I could say the cheerful student sang Mrs. Stephen a song, and that would be fine, right? Last thing we're going to determine is the type of sentence this is. Declarative. Declarative. This is declarative. What's your evidence that this is declarative? It has a period at the end. Right.